Hello and welcome to this tutorial on creating anamorphic text using Tinkercad. What is anamorphic text? It's this. This says Titan Pride. Depending on your perspective, you will see different words. And we're going to make this one. Link is the hero of the Legend of Zelda series. And uh, these are really cool little things. It's actually pretty easy to make them, provided that you are using the same number of letters in both words. And I'm going to show you how to make that. So I've already made the Lincoln Hero, but let's make this again. So bring up Tinkercad here. And uh, here's the, the basic work plane over here on the right, basic shapes. Uh, click here. We want to go down to text and numbers. Tinkercad has some built-in letters and we're just going to use those because it's uh, nice and simple. Uh, so we want to pull in uh, all of the letters for both of our words. So here is link and where's the K? I'm scrolling the wrong way. Here's the K. Here is H, E, R, and O. So here are our letters and it's very important at this step that we uh, understand how these letters work on the grid. I made a previous version of this tutorial without this understanding and it, it caused me some problems. So down here at the bottom of the screen uh, you can see this little snap grid. It's currently set to 1.0 millimeters. Uh, that said, uh, when I drag in anything from the, the menu here, uh, these things are not on the grid. And if we zoom in, so let's, let's talk about the grid. We have this thicker sort of square. Uh, this is 10 millimeters. The individual smaller blocks are 1 millimeters. And these are not on the grid when you pull them in. They will be kind of random. Here, you can see it with the L. See the L is not on the grid. We want to fix that, but before we fix that, uh, that was the wrong one. Before we fix that, let's go ahead and make these letters the size that they need to be. But the grid is very important to making this work easy. So first up, we want to take our letters and we want to make all of them 20 by 20 by 20 in all three dimensions. So in Tinkercad, if you click on an object, you will get these little white handles. If you click on any of those handles, you can then, uh, if, if you just if you just mouse over them, uh, they will appear. But if you click, they will sort of pin in place, and then you can uh, change the numbers yourself directly. And so we want to make all of these 20 by 20 by 20. I will come back when that is done. The letter I is a little bit special. Uh, we don't want to make it 20 by 20 by 20. We want the width to not be 20. Let, let, let me do that one last. So the, uh, the thickness is 20. The height is 20. But this width, roughly in proportion, uh, I want one third of the 20. But I want a whole number. So I just use 7. Uh, this is special for the letter I. It, it just looks normal if you do this. So the letter I is 20 by 20, but only 7 blocks. Uh, sorry, 7 millimeters or 7 units wide. So here are our letters. Let's go to the top view. And now we need to line them up, but we want them on the grid. So I'm going to find... Let me just sort of zoom over here. Because they're 20 by 20, this makes it really easy to follow the grid. There's a lot of benefits to this. And so now this H should be perfectly in this 2 by 2 area here. And it's this dashed line that you need to look at. That's what we want. And what I discovered is that when you pull these letters in, they're not on the grid. See like the letter E? It's not on the grid. But once you move them around, because of the snap grid setting, it will now snap to be on the grid 
at the right, uh, at whatever the snap grid setting is. So we want to pop that right there. And I'm just leaving a, uh, uh, a distance of 10 between them because it's just a little bit easier. And visually, it's not necessarily going to look like it's on the grid, but that dashed line, uh, as long as that's on the grid, you're, you're fine. If you have messed up at this point, it will cause you problems later. I will, I will show you what that is later. And then I'm going to skip some blocks, go down here, get these set up. Uh, again, the letter I is just kind of special, though we do want it on the grid. And so that would be here for the N, and then the last letter. And I think that's got it much easier once they're on the grid. So whatever your words are, uh, as long as they have the same number of letters, the following technique will work, and as long as you are on the grid, you are good. Now, why did we make them 20 by 20 by 20? The answer is the default size of the cube happens to be 20 by 20 by 20. This is going to make our life a lot easier. So I'm going to pull in a cube, then I'm going to make sure it's on the grid, okay? And then I'm going to use a little wonderful feature, uh, this little duplicate. So here's this. I'm going to use my arrow keys to move it over. Oops, I forgot to click duplicate. And I will then make sure it's on the grid. Again, just makes this a lot simpler. Okay, and then duplicate, duplicate. And we now have our four blocks. They should all be on the grid, one for each of your letters. We now need to select uh, one row of our letters. We need to rotate this. So you might want to go to a, a different view where you can just see this a little better. Uh, this is the rotation handle. And it's not one. Let me grab it. If you rotate outside of here, you have full 360 degree control. But if you go on the inside, you'll see it's jumping to these preset common sections we want the 90 degrees so that is done go back to this view so I can select my other word back to this and then repeat for the other letters okay and so we now have our letters they are on the grid they're all rotated nicely they're all standing up we're in good shape we now want to change our letters so that uh, we're going to get that anamorphic text. So these, this, this back row of letters here, we need to rotate these letters. And you have to do this individually. I guess uh, top view is easiest. So rotate it so that the front face is to the right. And again, inside of the circle, and it snaps to the... Uh, uh, the grid where we where we like it, and so we're we're ready to go. These are all in really really good shape. So here we go. Making these anamorphic text uh, letters, it is actually really really simple. We're going to take one set of our words. Okay, um, I'm going to do link as my primary and hero as my secondary. So I'm going to take my secondary word here turn the first letter into a hole and then I need to simply merge it with this shape. You can use the arrow keys, you can drag it, but we want it to perfectly overlap the shape and this is where the grid is going to make your life a lot easier. Now this is an H so it's really easy to see all of the infighting between these two shapes that are exactly in the same space. They're fighting for dominance. That's why you're getting that red and uh, gray thing. We want to select both of our shapes and then we want to group them together. We now get this weird shape. This is the uh, the intersection of those two. Uh, then you want to select this. This is one shape even though it's you know not touching. It's considered one shape. Turn that into a hole and then we want to take our L and slide it again using the grid right on top of that pattern, then we select both of those, 
and we group those. And now you have an L from this angle and an H from the other angle. But let's go and take a look at that. So here's the L and there's our H. And it's that simple. We're using this grid to full effect. Now, the letter I is actually makes things a lot easier. I'm actually, in this case, I'm just going to delete the block. We don't need it. The I is a full vertical little section. There's no breaks or anything. There's no holes or indentation. It's just seven blocks wide. So I'm just going to make our uh, letter over here, here, make it seven blocks wide, and we're done. This is now, from this perspective, it's the I of length. From this perspective, it's the E of hero. So in, let's get these two a little more out of our space. And we'll zoom in and go to the top view again. Uh, turn this into a hole. And you can count your clicks if you want. But once it gets close, I don't think I'm quite on the grid. I think I'm one off. Yep. That on the grid. Yep. Select both merge. So now here's our in, in our hole and and here we are. It is so so easy if you're very very careful with your grid. Super important. So here's our N for link and our R for hero. Last one. I'm having trouble with my mouse at the moment. Uh, let's just go back to home. Thank you. Top hole. Merge this probably there. That looks correct. And one more. And that looks correct. Wait, wait, wait. Nope. I forgot a step. Got to make this a hole. And I think that is good. And select both. And now we have our K and our O. And so we're, we're effectively done. We, we now need to uh, position these and uh, make them look good, give them a little platform to stand on. So let's do that. I like going to the top view. I have I've roughly laid them out in this diagonal uh, from bottom left. Uh, that's on purpose. I'm now going to, again, use the grid, line this up. I think visually you need about two, two millimeters uh, uh, between the letters. And so uh, I'm going diagonally two. So two over, two up. If you want to start here and go up to over to, uh, that's fine. And so let's get to our third letter. I just think that you need a little bit of distance. So this is over there. So maybe that's where those cross. Let's take a look. Looks like it is. So now that one's in place. And I'm guessing there. Looks like it, and so we are good. Now this doesn't quite line up on the grid because the, uh, the letter I is sort of narrow, and we're we're going we're going up and over as we do each one. So it's not a perfect diagonal as you can see, but we should now be able to get the correct effect. So here is Link, the hero, and there you go. So let us now build a little platform for our uh, link hero. And I like to take the letters, select them together, and rotate about 45. There's, a, there's, It's just easier to rotate them, and then your block will, will, will fit over here. So with the letters selected, this is about 110 wide by 37. So I'm going to take my cube, 110, let's go a little more, 114. And I think that was 37, so let's go uh, 41. And uh, height, give it maybe five, something like that. Uh, 
hold on, my 37 didn't happen. 110, 114, 37, what did I say, 41? And then 5 was the height, so now it's good. So I'm just going to place this somewhere, roughly underneath. Uh, let's go back to the front view. Uh, these are on the uh, work plane. So let's go up 5 pixels because our, our little platform is 5 pixels. And uh, this must be a visual glitch. You'll uh, you notice some of the letters, you can see the black outline, so it looks like it's touching, and then others look like they are going into the block. It's It's got to be a visual thing, because we, we counted correctly, I think it's fine. Uh, but if you go to this view and you select your letters, then you go to the top view, you can see that outline and see how it lines up with your uh, your platform. So let's just give it a little bit of space. It looks like I need to add one more on the bottom side here. So 42 and it, it will add from the top left so it adds to the bottom or to the right. So this should now be perfectly centered such as it can be with our little platform. So our little dashed line is an even thickness. So this is effectively done but as a last step, I like to select everything. Then we're going to rotate everything that 45 degrees back so that when you print, it's going to print all your letters straight and then the platform will be diagonal. And uh, because this is Link and Hero, let's give him a nice, a nice green color. Uh, let's see, let's group it all together as one piece. Don't know if I like that green. Is that a better green? I think that's a better green. But there you go. This is anamorphic text. You can make your own. Very simple. Um, little little bit of troubleshooting over here. First off, with the text tool, uh, I don't prefer the text tool. I like the individual letters. But the text tool will let you get individual letters in other fonts. There's not a few, not a lot of options. So here's a sans, here's a sans mono, and a, a serif. But you can do this with other fonts, at least a little bit using the text tool. Uh, also, if you were to uh, pull in a letter and it's not perfectly on the grid, I'm gonna simulate that for you. I'll show you the problems you'll run into. So this is not perfectly on the grid, probably. Yeah, it's not perfectly on the grid. So if it's not perfectly on the grid, you're going to run into weird uh, weird problems when you try to uh, merge these, these things together. Uh, so you try to line this up and it's not exactly, and when you go to uh, group them together, you get either little bits of a roof at the top, or you'll get little Little bits of, of little, little bits of feet at the bottom, for example. Um, so if you're seeing that business, like like this one, you've got a little bit at the bottom. If you're seeing anything like that, uh, your objects are not lined up. You can try to fix it by finding the problem object, changing your snap grid to say 0.1, and then moving it into a space, and then you know, trying again uh, after you move the snap grid back to 1.0 millimeters. Uh, or you can delete those objects and try again. Uh, I've, I've seen some that were at weird rotations and they were just really not recoverable. So do the best that you can. Try again. This is a pretty fun little project. You can make some cool stuff this way.